Okay, we're exploring the nature of light. I'm going to finish up uh, with uh, photography and optics. Um, since all of photography is about light, there might be a small percentage of you that are interested in what light actually is. And you won't read about this anywhere else, period. This is gleaned from many, many countless years of research of Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Eric P. Dollard, and the rest. And... Uh, making a lot of experimentation and discovery myself that there is a missing component of light that explains away wave particle duality, explains the photoelectric effect, explains why coherent EM radiation is additively more powerful given an identical wattage to incoherent to EM radiation. So let's take a look and uh, let's uh, talk first about what light is. Nothing shot out of a laser, for example. The electric field can only soak into the medium as the rate defined by that medium. Light can only travel at the luminal velocity as defined by the dielectric medium and its dimensional relationship, which is 1 over c squared. Okay? Which uh, Einstein never discovered this. This is a Poincaré and uh, goes back to Rudyard Boscovich. Uh, actually, uh, the notion of uh, e equals mc squared, which is a misunderstanding, does not uh, is not a discovery of Einstein. It's a discovery of Henri Poincaré. Okay, light is not a material in, uh, projection. It is an inductive process. It's a process of the ether. Okay, light is not a material projection. There's nothing shot out of a light bulb. There's nothing shot out of the sun or a laser. You're going like, oh, well, you're crazy. Well, just Hold on and suspend your disbelief for a few seconds, all right? Light only seems to travel, but it's only one of a countless of illusions called wave motions. Waves of the ocean seem to transverse the ocean, but they only appear to do so. Since waves are pistons and universal engines, the pistons that operate up and down, wave pistons of light, the transverse electrical and magnetic components of light, i.e. of the ocean, i.e. the field, i.e. inertia, which is synonymous with the ether, operate radially and spirally inward and outward, just like magnetic divergence and convergence, centrifugal and centripetal, force and motion and inertia and acceleration, toward and away from gravity. Now, gravity, as I told you before, is not an entity unto its own, but it's that radial dielectric pulse, which is light. It's electrostatic acceleration. The same thing that you and I call gravity is no different than what uh, human uh, stupidity for ages is called magnetic attraction. And it's the exact same thing in your old TV set. When you turn it on, you actually see the dust particles start to collect to the surface of the TV set. That dielectric acceleration is gravity, is magnetic, it's one thing only. Okay, there's no such thing as gravity and electrostatic acceleration, and there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. A magnet is nothing other than a field laser. A magnet, for example, before it is magnetized, okay, here's the magnet, before it's magnetized and turned into a magnet, it gets stuck in the induction coil, it gets stuck in the magnetizer, it gets a pulse, a, a coherent pulse of a dielectric induction, which causes... Now they talk about aligned domains, but this means nothing. That's only a description. There is no quantitative change in a magnet pre-magnetization or post-magnetization. The only thing that's changed is coherency. A magnet is exactly nothing more, nothing more complex than a field laser. And obviously it's not a laser. A laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. But is a coherency of field. As I told you before, you know, the difference between a 5 watt light bulb, which is worthless to, to read by, and a 5 watt laser, burn a hole in your ass, is phased coherency. That means that all these dielectric pulses are operating in tandem. Just like a bunch of sticks which you can knock over, but you tie them together, and you try to karate chop them or break them, it becomes increasingly, exponentially more powerful. Waves of light, waves of light do not travel. They re reproduce each other uh, from wave field to wave energy um, through space. The plane of zero curvature which binds all wave fields. They act as mirrors to reflect light from one field into the, to the other. This uh, sets up an appearance of light as traveling, but it's an illusion. 
It is illusion. Light does not travel at all. Now superficially that sounds insane, but light is not a material projection. It is an induction process of the medium. Same thing in a lens. Okay, I showed you the video from Harvard, by the way, or I was at Cambridge, showing you the Leyden jar experiment. Glass is a dielectric capacitor. I showed you the video where electrostatic generator Actually, this is why glass blows up in your microwave. It's not due to heat. They don't do them anymore because they've improved them. They do sometimes. But also why the old insulators on the power lines, the old glass insulator, remember the old blue ones that people collect as antiques now? This is why you try to get a convergence point of all light. Here's the red light, for example, and here's the blue light. The blue light has a lot more dielectric capacitance, so its convergence point is here, and here's where we get chromatic aberration. We want a desired convergence point of here, but the blue light doesn't converge there because it is running through electromagnetic retardation. Okay? It means that the level of induction has been slowed. This is also applied to GPS satellites. Okay? has nothing to do with space. Space is not a force nor a field. It acts on nothing. Everything is electromagnetic uh, retardation and rates of induction relative to speed and medium that it transverses. Okay? So light is not a production. The notion that light is traveling is an illusion of human pathetic perceptual comprehension. Light does not travel. It reproduces itself like an unbroken chain of compression and rarefaction pistons analogously through the ether. Just as we know that the heat of the sun is not going through endless countless millions of miles of cold space and landing on your face. Okay, it is a reproduction of field compressions and rarefactions traveling okay, through space. By the way, space is never a terminal for any field. There has never been any uh, field or field attribute that is ever terminated in space. Space cannot be a terminal for anything. Space is not even a hole within which any field or any matter could ever fall. It's impossible. The so-called speed of light is nothing more than the rate of transverse induction which generates electromagnetic retard retardation as per the transverse uh, nature of light. All motion is expressed in waves. And this phenomena has a rate of induction, which is the speed of light, which is not a limit, but the rate of induction of a given medium. Everybody thinks, well, the speed of light is constant. Well, it's not. That's why you get chromatic aberration in your lens. Why do you think you get chromatic aberrations in your lens? And why do you think lens manufacturers have to re-columnate, reconverge the light with these secondary flint elements? Okay? They have to, re they have to correct. This is blue light here, and this is red light, for example, right here. The blue light has much higher capacitance, and it undergoes much greater electromagnetic... It's like throwing on the brakes. When it goes through the glass, the blue light gets... <coughs> brakes thrown on, and it spins off in a different direction. Not spins, but goes off in a different direction, and reconverges at a different point than does the red light. This is the origin of chromatic aberration. Flint elements are used to reconverge the light. Um, gravitational lensing, for example, is no different than chromatic aberration of a lens which changes the induction of blue light more. The rate of induction. Just like a person splashing in a lake, okay? You got some doofus out in a really calm, placid lake. Okay, here we go. Here's a huge lake. You got some doofus out here. And he's flapping his arms in the lake, and he's causing waves that are going out here. I mean, you think his arms are reaching out here? No, of course not. It is a perturbation of the field. This is what is meant. This is about a simple analogy. Here you got Joe Blow out. I'm drowning, I'm drowning. He's splashing his arms. Okay, out here you have waves. And of course, obviously, they translate into power. Anybody has been hit by a powerful wave knows what the hell I'm talking about. So Joe's causing waves in the, the placid uh, pond that is... And this is where I told you that uh, idiot uh, quantum mechanics and general relativity, they know they cannot get rid of ether, but it's like the most evil word imaginable. Ether is like saying the most awful racist term 
you could think of, or worst slur you could think of, when it comes to physics. That is the horrible, super evil word. So what they did is they replaced it with another word. Several different words, actually. Quantum fluid, dark matter. They replaced it with a lot of different stuff. But it's nothing other than the ether. They can't get by because they know that fields are not made out of particles. And that they know that instantaneous action at a distance exists. So here we have Joe. This is the limit of his arms right here. Okay, here we have an ether perturbation. Same thing in the light bulb. Just imagine this whole thing is a freaking light bulb. Okay? There's nothing shot out of a light bulb. Okay? Electrical power is brought through a coiled tungsten element. Okay, light is generated, i.e., ether perturbation is generated at the point nexus of the light bulb, but there is nothing shot out of a light bulb. Well, you're all grown up. We're all grown up to believe that, you know, a light bulb shoots out light. Well, the light bulb doesn't shoot out a damn thing. Okay? There's nothing, there is nothing in this world that is shot out of a frigging light bulb. Nothing. Let's imagine this is a drop of water. It's already come in. It's already splashed. Here we have the ripple below. Which comes first? The pinch. Now, this is the water here. The drop has already come in. You've actually seen how uh, water drops uh, react. Here we have, this is the notion, this is whole, the whole BS of wave particle duality. The drop has already come in, this is the after effect, this is the effect, not the cause. The drop's already come in, now the, uh, the field is retracting, this would be the electrical and the magnetic component, and it's actually, you know, rippling and traveling. But, what initiated it? What initiated it was a perturbation in the field, the drop that came in that caused the smooth glass surface of the water, in this case the field, to become disturbed. Nothing is shot out of a laser, nothing is shot out of a light bulb. This is the whole premise of Einstein's idiocy and current mechanics. We think we're so advanced because we have all these inventions. But humanity is not advanced at all. I mean, we think we are, but we're not. Now, how does this apply to photography? Well, photography is about light, and if it doesn't interest you, that's fine. All photography is the capture of an array of variegated field perturbations which are aesthetically poetic and pleasing, okay? Now, some people are interested in actually knowing what light is. I'll tell you right now that, I mean, I'm the first one to publish this information in my book. I mean, it's in the third edition now, but you won't find this specific information. You'll find very slight hints at it from Tesla and Faraday. Faraday came kind of close. He called uh, magnetism the dielectric field. Other people would read that and gloss over it, and they'd have no idea what he meant by that. But, you know, Faraday understood that mag magnetism was just the loss of inertia. The ether is nothing other than pure inertia. Okay, and the loss of that inertia is expressed by transverse components. Okay? Now you understand the actual explanation of field coherency. So what is light? Light is not electromagnetic. You say, well, yeah, it is. That's what we're taught to believe. That's only part of the story. That's like saying a car is only a transmission and a hole in wheels. This is the entire engine of light. And this is the if you take one section of light out, one frequency, and you look at it, and it's like, oh, this is where Einstein and all of human stupidity currently revolves around. It looks at this one section, let's erase this over here, looks at this one section here, and it goes, oh, here we have waves, here and here and here, it's kind of like a particle. They don't understand. Humanity doesn't understand what light is. Light has a longitudinal z-axis radial dielectric component. Light is not merely electromagnetic. It is a field perturbation which necessitates transverse electrical and magnetic manifestations. Thanks for watching. You saw it here first and you will never see it anywhere else. At least not until after I post this video. <laughs>